where they can start digging those ponds because to me that day that was the only answer because we couldn't wait 220 years we had to have a way to catch this stuff when it does overwhelm them and then once it when the quits ran, they recycled it through and cleaned that one up. But so on the ponds, are they not ready to start? Or is there some permit out there that we can exert some pressure on somebody on to get an issue to let them start digging? Because digging a pond can't take very long. EPD issued the um, permit for the equalization basin in December. So it took them nine months to, to get a permit to dig a hole. That, that, that's what's so frustrating about all this. And then my other question, I'm going to shut up. Um, it is a more targeted question. I was on that late Friday afternoon call with Ms. Burnham and, and Mr. Moffitt and several others about this, this current spill. I don't know the science behind it, but what are we waiting on here? Is that stuff, as you said, clogged up, stopped up somewhere? Can somebody come and give me an idea, or is it going to dilute? Or are we waiting on it's just going to break loose one day and it's going to come? Does anybody know how that might play out? What are we looking at there, just on this issue? I guess, I guess. All of those are, are likely. Uh, uh, I think I think you hit the three options uh, for, for what we're seeing in terms of the sample. That's why we're continuing. Well, we were holding our breath that Friday afternoon. It was a holiday weekend and Christmas was coming. We, right. And then it just kind of nothing happened. So it's, it's between the state line and where it went in. Well, I, I, you know, I was frankly surprised to see the numbers that we saw. We got a little rain. Monday. There was some rain up, up in Valdosta. So, um, yeah. Although the worst case scenario is we have another major rain event and we get another spill and then that spill hits this clogged up mess. And all well, let me stop you, Jason. Down. If you have a major rain event, it's not if, you're going to have a spill. Right. So that's why I'm so upset about the catch pond because that was the only answer right now to solve the water when you have a flood event. And, and you can't get that done. It don't seem not to. That's not y'all's problem. Let, let, let me ask you right here. What, yes. what, what authority does the federal government have if Valdosta is just not going to do it, or Georgia does not address this problem, what legal option does the federal government have uh, to address this issue? Because we've been doing this for years, and I think people want to see something happen. So Senator if they're going to say they haven't dug the pond uh, for whatever reason, uh, that that stuff is settled somewhere, and it's going to come down somewhere or another. And it's not going to go north. We know it's coming. So, what what authority does the federal government have to what penalties do you think is legally applied to this situation in the process? And keep in mind, this has been going on for 20 to 30 years. This is not something that happened in December. Well, we're not Clean Water Act attorneys up here. I mean, we can certainly try and figure out what the exact law is and what the statutory obligations are and get back to you on that, but I'd hate to answer a question that I really don't know about when I'm not an expert in it, but we're happy to get an answer to But you said EP who? You said D? Who? E e e D oh, that's their agency. So they were the ones holding up the permits just to dig a dark hole. Once again, it was Georgia again. I, I'm assuming that it was their, that it was their permitting delegated authority to issue those permits um, what that timeline is and what it typically is I mean it definitely depends on the nature of the issue and, and sort of the state process and, and you know I could specifically speak for Georgia or speak for what their process is or how long it takes to issue a permit I mean I don't know if Florida I don't want to put you on the spot but, but how long things typically run like that at the state 14, level, fourteen point six days to issue a permit for me. But. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, doing, they're doing very well, uh, but I don't want to speak too much. Would there any EPA process. permits that were required for those holding ponds at all? You, you guys didn't have anything to do with holding. George is not going to say, well, it was EPA's fault. No, I mean it's a, that, that's a delegated program to, to the state. Representative May uh, added that some of the. Feedback we received from the city of Valdosta on the, the length of time it was taking them to accomplish the permit was um, Georgia's Environmental Protection Division would send um, requirements or questions back, like perk, perking the amount of the soil and the perk, you know, just different, a lot of different things. Now, the time it took for Valdosta to answer those 
questions on their permit application and send it back to them to resolve it. I don't know. But I know there was a lot of leap back and forth between uh, Georgia's EPD and and, uh, and the city of Valdosta. And I think that's had a lot well, of that, people that, That's the case that you can't see the mouth from the mole here. That's so we're going to worry about right. park tests, but we're going to let that set, set and eight well, eight gallons next Let me ask you. Here's what I want to, I want an answer before I leave today. Uh, we can take a break. Y'all you know, make some calls whatever you want to do. But I've been dealing with Georgia on the Appalachian River issue. And we've been in court since the early 1990s on that issue. And it's currently in the system right now, and quite frankly, in the legal system, court system. And it doesn't look good for those of us uh, who want something done to get more water down the Appalachian River. And so we're frustrated. I don't have a lot of hope for that. And I, I don't have a lot of hope for this Valdosta issue. Right. I mean, I, I just don't. So the only option that we have as, as Floridians is to turn to our federal government and say, what can you do to address this issue? And if it's nothing, then, you know, let's tell the people we're not going to help you. But somehow, I've got to believe that if Georgia is causing an issue for Floridians, that the federal government has a role and has the ability to do something, whatever it is. I, I don't. I mean, uh, so how do how do we how do we get an answer to that? I mean, how do we leave here today knowing that our federal government is going to do something to address this issue that's been going on for how many years? Is it? You know, decades. So, what, what are we going to do? I don't want to be sitting here, well, I won't be sitting here a year or so. <laughs> but I don't want y'all sitting here, I may come sit out there, uh, and addressing this same issue. Uh, it's, it's, you know, we're on, a, we're on a wheel, just keeps turning. So what, what, can we, what can we expect from our federal government to ensure that Floridians are not harmed by lack of action by another state? Well, I mean, certainly we have we have oversight authority, and if you know Georgia um, negotiated a consent order with the city of Valdosta, and they weren't meeting those obligations under the, the uh, new consent order and meeting the projected timeline, uh, certainly EPA would step in and, and make sure that the proper uh, procedures and, and um, uh, oversight was given to it. Now. Statutorily, I don't know necessarily what that timeline would look like. But I mean, can you can you find me? I mean, we've got we've got.